Hello and welcome back to Mrs O'Gram's Maths. In the last video we looked at how to solve um, systems of equations algebraically where there was one unique solution. We're going to look at what happens when you don't get to having a unique solution. So there are three different um, situations that can come out of this. The first one being that we get a unique solution which is what we've already seen. So you get something like x equals 3, y equals minus 1, z equals 4. So you get a unique solution that is one point in space where those three planes intersect and it's given by um, these values of x, y and z. The second type is that we get dependent equations which means we don't get a unique solution. In fact there are infinitely many solutions. And what that looks like when we're solving is we, we try to get down to this x, y, z equals something situation, um, but we end up coming down to an equation that would always be true, something like 2 equals 2 or 0 equals 0. Now that's being something that's always true no matter what x, y, and z are, which means that we end up with infinitely many solutions. So x, y, and z can be lots and lots of different things um, because this will always be true no matter what x, y, and z are. Now, what that means geometrically is that we have a line of intersection. And finally, we have inconsistent, which means that we get no solutions. There's no place where those uh, planes are intersecting either at one particular point or on a straight line. There's actually no solution. Now, just a reminder that we looked at this on a previous video of what it looks like geometrically. So it's this bit here, this last branch where it's inconsistent. So um, this one here, that those are the dependent solutions that we can have um, and these ones here that we're looking at as inconsistent can fall into three categories. We could either have all three of those um, planes are parallel, two of them are parallel, or they're not parallel but there's no um, intersection point or line on all three of them. Now how you can spot that when you're solving inconsistent equations, um, you get down to a point where you have something that can never be true, something like 2 equals 0 comes out of your equation, or um, 4 equals 7. You get to a point in solving that algebraically where that's just not possible to be true for any value of x, y, and z. And once you've got down to that stage, you can take a look at the types of equations you've got to see which of those three categories it falls under for um, whether those planes are parallel or whether they just don't intersect um, and has nothing to do with being parallel. OK, let's take a look at some examples. So here's an example. We've got three equations. We go to our calculator. We try and put it into solver. And when we hit solver, we get maths error. Now that straight away tells you we are not looking for a unique solution so we're going to have to do this by hand. So I label up my equations and away I go. I'm going to do um, number 1 times by 2 to make the x's equivalent in 1 and 2 and then um, subtract number 2. So to do that we are going to then get um, and I'm going to write out my working quite fully with this one. So if I double that and then I'm going to rewrite equation number two underneath and do a subtraction. So we've got zero on the x terms. 2y plus 3y that's going to end up as being 5y and then we have a 2 minus a 4, so we've got minus 2z is equal to 2 minus 6 is minus 4. Now I need to do the same with another pair of equations, so I'm going to do number 1 times by 3, take away number 3. And with that one, we end up with, so we'll get uh, 3x, 3y, 3z equals 1. And then I'm going to put the other one underneath just to make things a little easier. And if we do that subtraction, you'll see that we come out with 5y minus 2z equals minus 4. Again, the same as what we had before. Now, when we go to try and solve these on the next step, we put those two um, next to each other. Where this one was equation 4 and this one was equation 5. So we've got 4 and 5 here. 
Um, but what we would have normally done is try to do something where we do one take away the other. But if we do a subtraction here, then we end up with zero equals zero. Now, this is always true. We can't actually get any further with trying to solve x, y, and z. Um, these will always be consistent no matter what, we, what values we pick for x, y, and z, which means we have infinitely many solutions to this set of three equations, which means they meet on a line, which means that the equations are dependent. And they're called dependent because um, one, one of the equations will depend on the other two in that you can make one of the equations from the other two. Um, so they are actually linear combinations of each other. Now, if you look closely at this one, what you can actually spot is if we added together equation number one and two, we would get equation number three. So that's what we mean by them being dependent. Um, now, it might not be as straightforward to see in other sets of equations. It might be that if you did one plus twice the other one, it would make the third one, for example. OK, example number two. I'm going to move a bit faster through this so you can pause the video and look at my working to see what is going on here, but just so we can get through um, the actual meaning of it a little quicker. So I go through solving that and I get down to something where I, I know that that can never be true. 0 equals 20 is not um, ever going to get a solution to that. So we have inconsistent equations or um, no solutions to this. But we want to take a look at the original equations and figure out which of the three types of inconsistency we have. So looking at those three equations, we can multiply them up into um, a form where we try and get it look at for one of those values, the x's I'm going to go with, multiply them all up to be the same. And what you'll notice on this particular example is we have all of the equation parts with the, the x, y, and z's, they come out the same, but the constant at the end is different. Now, this means that we have those are parallel. So they have the same x, y, and z terms, but the constant is different. So they end up um, being parallel to each other, but sort of sitting at slightly different places because of where that constant is. Which brings us to example number three. Now, I'm not even going to bother trying to solve this because one and two, we can quite clearly see, are already parallel. They've got the same coefficients of x, y, and z, but a different constant term at the end here. So what I just need to find out, is it only those two that are parallel or is the third one parallel to them as well? So I'm going to multiply them all up to start with a 2x. And once we've done that, we can very easily see this third one does not fit the pattern of uh, the other two where they go 2x, 10y, 2z. So it's only the first two that are parallel and the third one is different. And it looks something like this. Now, I don't particularly like this picture, but I'm not very good at drawing the planes themselves. In this picture, the, the third plane is going through um, normal to the other ones, meaning, meaning that it's at a right angle. And that might not necessarily be true. It might be going through at a bit of an angle. So it's actually more likely to be something like this second picture that I've attempted to draw for you, where the, the pink ones are the two parallel ones and the green is cutting through both of them at an angle that's not 90 degrees to both of those planes. And our final example, let's um, pop the algebra up of trying to work this through. So on this one, once again, we get down to something that is impossible. So we have um, an inconsistent set of equations. And then we go back to our original equations to see if we can see if any of them are parallel. So um, I'm going to multiply these up to make each of them start with 12x. And we can see from these three resulting equations that all three equations have three different coefficients for um, x, y, and z. We don't get any of them parallel to each other. None of them is a multiple of another one. Um, so we don't have any parallel planes. Meaning that we get that sort of tent shape. And it might not be a perfect equilateral triangle in the middle of that tent like this picture shows. They could be at all sorts of weird angles to each other. But the point is that we have no parallel planes, no point of intersection, no line of intersection of all three planes. You get that tent or Toblerone shape in the middle. 
And that is everything that you need to know about solving these equations and how to find each of the different types of geometric relationships that you've got between your three um, equations of planes.